So will he have some new allies that have come to his point of view in this upcoming season? Yes, yeah, and uh, particularly the forms of the, uh, the authorities in, in New York who realise that maybe this old guy's onto something. And, um, but they still... Uh, they're still capable of uh, underestimating him, you know, until he has to say that was uh, an attack of about um, 30 vamps. And they're saying, we got rid of him. You know, he said, no, there'll be uh, a few thousand more tonight, trust me. And he's right, you know. <laughs> so I think he, um, the credi credibility issue he has at the end of season one, having failed to dispatch the master, he, uh, he has a lot to, uh, to claw back in terms of his uh, respectability within the group. I think he's, he's gone down the pecking order a little bit, having, having got it very, very wrong in the, at the end of season one, totally underestimating the master's powers of recovery. And um, so what very interesting for me is playing a character who is so determined and is such a forceful character and, and, he, and he knows he's right even though he has trouble persuading other people that, that this is what's really happening after that episode of failing to get rid of him I say he starts to have self-doubt and it's always interesting and it's, it's good writing when you when you see a side of a character who's not just this, this guy who's who's like a 70 odd year old action hero you know he's, he's, he's capable of, of having weaknesses and, and he and he starts it out himself and it takes him a lot a lot of time and energy persuading the other members of the group to, to keep going because they're starting to say well we could be wrong before maybe we shouldn't take this route you know maybe. but um, thankfully Vasily Fett is slowly becoming his surrogate son, whether he whether he would admit that or not, I suspect not, but he, uh, he's, he's got this, this family that he never had around him, he's, he's lived as a, a loner most of his life, especially after losing his, uh, losing his wife, and um, he spent all his time and energy building up his armory in his basement, and uh, collecting, making silver weapons for the, just in case the day happened, and all of a sudden now, these other people that, um, I mean, if someone had told him uh, before it all happened that his greatest ally would be a rat catcher, he, <laughs> nah, he would he just wouldn't. <laughs> no, no way, try again. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's the most unlikely alliance in a way, but it's a very, uh, it's a very fruitful one, I think. Because at last he's got someone who'll say, yeah, where are we going? Yeah, we're going down this alley where you can't see anything. I'll, yeah, I'll trust you, I'll come with you. Whereas some of the others are starting to say, maybe not. Yeah. And they, they find it different. So the group are kind of together but in season two, but they, they split off into their own little ways of solving the problem. But at least in season two, there are more people on board who, who will now believe this old guy. Yeah. Well, he kind of answered three of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering about the book. What can you tell us about the book and how important it is to finding and destroying the master? Well, yes, the, the Oxido Lumen, which um, has apparently existed for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, some people, um, like Eldridge Palmer, he, he, he was searching for it at one point, and, um, and he gives up because he said, it doesn't exist, it's been destroyed because he heard that it had been burnt or something uh, in the monastery years before. But Sitraki firmly believes that uh, this book exists you know, and he's, he's going he's gonna to find it because it's got all the history of this Trigoi from uh, Sardu onwards. And we showed this in flashbacks as well. And uh, he knows that in there are all the answers uh, to how to, um, to get rid of this creature. And so that becomes his main, main objective. And, um, He's quite ruthless, um, and he'll even, he'll even use the ancients um, in the season, in the first episode. I believe it's the first episode of season two. Um, he formed a kind of 
unholy alliance with this, what is essentially the enemy. But, um, and, uh, and also he, 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 he contacts and, and, and forms an alliance with um, with one of the leading gangsters in New York, one of the, what becomes one of the uh, local warlords in, in the aftermath of this. And so he's not afraid to to form alliances with people who he wouldn't normally touch with a barge pole in real life, because it'll, if it helps him to get what he wants, in this case, this this book, and he tracks he tracks this book, and he, he, he finds evidence that it was in an auction in Marseille in 1860, and, and he... So he he thinks he knows how to get hold of it. He's quite ruthless in getting it. So, so I like about him, but he he, he yeah he does some badass things, but he but for a, for a, for a good for a good reason as he sees it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.